Yeah, everybody has their own things that I always encourage people to find what works for them uh, because that's really the only way you're going to be able to do it. You know, you see those videos that go viral every once in a while, like they tried Neil Gaiman's writing routine or they tried Stephen King's writing routine for a week and uh, they were kind of exhausted by it, something, or they produced a lot or something. But it's also just like you have to find what works for you. Some people can write for long periods of time every day. A lot of people can't because that takes a lot of energy, a lot of focus. You know, everybody has shit going on in their lives that you can't just... A lot, most people don't have a lot of time to just sit down and dedicate to it like somebody like King. And even King is one of the first ones to admit, like, until he started making money and stuff off of it, he didn't have time for that either. You know, he was working, he had kids, you know, all that. He was working two jobs most of the time, you know. And, you know, you just have to do what you can. But my actual routine for all of my writing is first draft is the diarrhea draft, right? Like, you just let it all out. Uh, and then I sit it aside. Usually, depending on how excited I am about it, I'll let it sit for a month or a year. I mean, depending on what it is. And then I go back. So let's, I guess let's just do poetry here. Poetry, I handwrite first drafts. First drafts in a notebook is just, I don't want to say free writing. There's usually some type of goal, but it's always kind of, yeah, just anything goes, let it all out, see where it's happening, what's happening on this page. And then I let it sit for a while. And then when I go back to do a second draft, I'll usually start typing and I'll start typing and putting it out on a page being like, okay, that's an editing process in itself. How does it look on the page? How do I want it to look on the page? And you can start cutting out big sections, like, oh, this section, you know, this whole page is needs to be cut out because it's just random and I went off on a tangent or something. And then my rule is usually four drafts before I let anybody else see it. So then I'll do another draft either word for word rewrite or depending on how I feel about it, a little nitpicky rewrite. And then I'll do like one more once over and then I'll usually give it to a friend or an MFA or something, a workshop or something like that, you know, and uh, see what they think of it. Um, but I usually like to keep it to myself for about four drafts. That's my general rule. Just because as soon as I get somebody else's idea, as soon as I give it to even a trusted friend that, you know, knows my style, knows what I'm going for. It's now, I don't want to use the word infected, but I'll say kind of it's tainted with not just me anymore. Now it has this other person's ideas and, and, and thoughts on it. So that's one of the reasons I like to keep the first four drafts to myself. Um, but, you know, you have to find what works for you, too. Like, I just feel a certain way about it. Um, I also am concerned, like, I always try to, I don't want the kind of social hysteria that's going around. I don't want that to infect it. I don't want to be somebody who's writing against that because I don't care enough to write against that kind of stuff. At least with my creative endeavors, I might do it in essays or something if I think it's a big enough problem. Uh, I did this with an Oppenheimer review on the movie uh, more recently where I saw a lot of politically motivated criticism coming at it. Um, and I just felt I had to write an essay, like a nonfiction thing, about why that's a mistake and we should view it as a work of art and not as a work of political propaganda or whatever people were trying to say about it. And I just, yeah, so I think that's important. The other thing I would say is distance and time. The only way you know if something's working or not by yourself, you know, I think a lot of people fall into the trap of relying on somebody else, like a workshop or an instructor or a friend to tell them if it's good or not. But I think you can really do that yourself um, if you put enough time and distance between you and the person, the you as the person who wrote it and you as the person you are today, right? Because if you wrote something three months ago, you're a different person today, three months later. So you're looking at it and you can kind of see the flaws a little easier. You still won't be able to see all of them because it's your work, right? And it's kind of like a baby. You're like, oh, it's beautiful no matter what, right? But I think time and distance help a lot. Like there's really no other way to go about it. Like, and you, you've seen a lot, a lot of writers talk about this where like if you're going to start self-editing your things or you don't have like an editor you've been working with for a long time, well, you know, sometimes just some distance can help you see a little clearer um, in the forest. You know, you can see the whole forest instead of just the trees that are immediately in front of you and all of that, as they say, right? But yeah.
that's how I like to do it. And I think it works for me. Uh, but yeah, everybody has their own kind of techniques for that. But I, I always say that that's editing. That's the work of writing. The fun part is making things up and just kind of exploding onto the page, right? The work is the rewrites, the edits, the going back and, and, and judging yourself, being like, is this good enough? You know, is this as good as it can be? Uh, you know, is this lazy? Is this, am I just getting, because sometimes you do get tired. And even when you're editing, I think you need to recognize when you're feeling exhausted or when you're feeling kind of done with it, you're not going to be as critical, right? Speaking of Berryman, Berryman has this great quote that writers like to share where he says, uh, one must be ruthless with one's own writing or someone else will be, right? Like, because that's very true. Like, you, everyone's like, oh, we're our own harshest critics. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> you're not your harshest critic, okay? There will be people that will dig in as hard as they can, especially if you go through an MFA route. That's part of it. People will do that. 